Hello there, Ryan Camba here. I'm making a video today because we've been having a problem with the right front wheels breaking off our four cylinder cars on uh, quarter mile dirt track racing. And we covered several theories and I believe that we came up with the issue of why the wheels are breaking off. So we just shot a quick video here and I want to show you what we found. Now in our class, we're required to run one inch lug nuts, which is one of these as a safety precaution, allegedly. Now, I'll get to the allegedly part in a little bit. They want us to run these lug nuts over the factory style lug nuts. I think that this is a mistake in our particular class. And uh, let's go into a little bit better detail of why we think that. This is the first wheel that uh, broke on us. Uh, it was in the right front position. We had about 30 laps of running time on it. Now initially I had thought that this must just be due to the fact that this is a GM wheel and guys say that hey Chrysler wheels are stronger you should definitely run a Dodge wheel on the right front. Um, so I, I just took that as gold and I went with that. We'll take a quick look at the inside. As you can see, it's fresh all the way around. So it's not like the wheel was broke before or it was cracked and it was just, uh, you know, waiting to, waiting to let go. So the second wheel that we had an issue with, um, this wheel had an eight lap heat on it and it had five laps, six laps in the feature. You'll see there is a bend on this. Uh, this was not from racing contact. You can see that uh, there's no, we'll focus here, there's no marks from racing, uh, you know, rubbing up against somebody. Uh, but if you look in here, you can see right in here where the wheel had contacted the wall. This wheel left the car coming out of the corner at about 45, 50 miles an hour, and it went airborne. What bothered me is it went towards the grandstands, and th that's when I started looking into this. Um, I don't have the piece here, but I have some still images, which I'll show you in a second, of what the centers look like. Now, the holes are oblonged, and... It looks to me like it was a loose lug nut. On the first wheel that broke, uh, there, there was a small possibility that that could have been broken. Or, excuse me, it could have been loose. After the second, when we put the second wheel on, I tightened it myself. Another guy had tightened it at the track and it was checked yet again. Again, this wheel you can see, it's, it was a fresh break all the way around. It wasn't rusty, it wasn't broken before. And this wheel came off of a Chrysler uh, Dodge Stratus, Dodge Stratus. In this piece right here, it's hard to tell because it's missing, but you can tell that this hole was ovaled. And this one as well. And by the shiny parts that you see here, this wheel had rattled around on the rotor hat itself. That's why these wheels are breaking, because the wheels are loose. Now if you look very close, I'm going to try to get it to focus here. There's a crack right here. There's another crack right here. This one's a little harder to see. I'm going to show you why those, where those cracks are coming from and why this is happening. Okay, what we have here is the one inch lug nut that uh, IMCA and other tracks, even non-sanctioned tracks, want us to run. I believe that this lug nut is designed for a racing wheel, and I could rightfully see so. On these stock OEM wheels, they want us to replace the factory style lug nuts with these one inch lug nuts. 
if you look closely, look at this angle right here compared to this angle. This taper is greatly different. Here's another lug nut off of another GM product. Uh, just had a different style hubcap, that's why it looks different. If you look at the angle of this right here, you'll see that it's greatly different from the one inch lug nut. Now that doesn't seem like a big deal, but after our first wheel broke, a fellow racer came up to me and he says, what do your lug nuts look like? I said, like that. And he goes, oh dude, this is wore out. You can't have this. You have to throw these lug nuts out. Those lug nuts are junk. I said, well, these lug nuts are only a year old. Why would it make a weird shape like this? Why is it wearing away right here and not doing anything here? It was after the second wheel broke, I started investigating, and that's when I figured out why this is happening. Let's take a little closer look. Here we have a wheel that I removed from the car. This came off the left rear, which also had one inch lug nuts on. And you can see where the one inch lug nut had contacted right here. It's not making any contact down lower inside of the rim here. This is true on all of the lug nut holes. Now these wheels are torqued down and I didn't think that there was a problem, you know. You, uh, you torque the wheels down to what they should be at and you shouldn't have a problem. If we look at another wheel, uh, this came off of the car last year. I don't remember the position that it came off of. This one's a little more extreme. Uh, I know that this wheel has come off and on the car a couple times more than the last wheel that we looked at. You can see how the camera won't focus. There we go. You can see how the lug nut had contacted here, but doesn't contact here. Now when the wheels are torqued down, this is distorting the metal right here and it's pushing it out. It's hard to see, but there is a lip right here that is formed by the metal being pushed outward as you tighten that lug nut down. Now I believe because the lug nut is only making a contact area of this small spot, that allows this wheel to wiggle just a little bit. It doesn't need to wiggle a lot. That loosens that wheel up. Now the wheel can hammer around on the hub up against the hat or the drum, depending upon the position. And that is when the center of the wheels break out. Let's take a look at this a little bit closer. Okay, what I have here is I have a one inch lug nut held up by hand and a factory style lug nut held up by hand. And a spider scaring me. If you look, I'm going to really try to get this to focus. If you look at the one inch lug nut, and you look between the lug nut and the rim, you can see that you don't see a very good contact patch. It's not making a contact all the way through the lug nut hole. If you look at the factory lug nut, you can see that it's contacted all the way through. It's, it's touching the lug nut hole the entire depth of the hole, unlike the one inch lug nut. If I had a free hand, I can stuff a fingernail between the lug nut and the rim on the one inch lug nut. On the factory lug nut, I can't stick my hand through, or my hand, my fingernail through. Let's take a look at the front side. If we take our, first off I should tell you this rim came off of a street car that had factory lug nuts on it before. It's never had a one inch lug nut installed on it. We take our factory lug nut and we set it in the hole. You can see the contact that it makes on the outside. 
which if we look at our one inch lug nut, it's horrible lighting, but it, it also makes contact on the outside. But as you've seen on the inside, it's not making contact like the factory lug nut. So what we did is we took spray paint and we painted all of the holes. And we took a factory lug nut and we touched it into the lug nut hole with wet paint on it. That's the contact patch on this factory style lug nut on this factory wheel that has never had one inch lug nuts on it. Now if we come over to the one inch lug nut, light's going to mess me up here. This is the contact patch. That's all that's holding that wheel on. Um, don't be led astray by this. Uh, it just didn't get a good transfer of paint. That's the difference you have in how much contact there is with the lug nut touching the wheel in its lug nut hole itself. And just to show you there's not any funny business going on here, I'm going to attempt to do this again. Now if we take our factory style lug nut, set it in a hole, and take it out, you can see the contact we get. Now if we take our one inch lug nut, I'll find a different hole, set it in there. Same results. See if I can do this one handed here. I believe that that right there is what's causing these to knurl out and weaken. Now that doesn't cause the rim to break right here. I understand that. What causes the rim to break right here is when these lug nuts become loose because they've knurled this out this wheel can now slop around on the rotor hat. As it bangs back and forth, every time the wheel goes around, it weakens it in its weakest spot, which is right here. Now I've also had guys say that, hey, run an aluminum wheel, they're stronger. If you run the aluminum wheel, you have to run the factory style lug nuts. I believe that they're being misled by thinking that the aluminum wheel is stronger because the aluminum wheel is getting this much contact and the hole isn't getting oblonged or weakened because you can't run a one inch lug nut on an aluminum wheel. I'm sure that there's some you... Well unfortunately our last video clip got cut short by a few seconds but you didn't miss anything but me rambling anyway so no loss there. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was informative and I hope you learned something from it. I'm hoping that this video reaches sanctioning bodies, non-sanctioned tracks, and even rules committees. Um, maybe by adopting the one-inch lug nut rule to OEM-style wheels, uh, while our hearts were in the right places, safety in mind, maybe it's causing more harm than good. And I'm hoping that uh, possibly by this video, we can uh, have a safer, better outcome. Don't forget to go out and enjoy your races, and don't forget to turn left. Thanks.